ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. Warning, this episode contains strong language as well as major spoilers for America Decides, episode 8 of the final season of Succession. It was finally time for America to decide on this week's episode of Succession, but did it really? It was an election night that saw Shiv exposed, morals and ethics go out the window, political allegiances decided, and chaos unfolding that threatens to engulf the whole country. All with just two episodes left of the series. Every Tuesday until the final of Succession, we'll be reviewing each episode after it drops on the Leader podcast. Be sure to listen to hear analysis, insight and general fandom around one of the most talked about TV series ever. Joining me this week are... I'm Elizabeth Gregory. I'm a culture writer. I'm Martin Robinson. I'm acting features director. And I'm Hamish McBain. I'm the deputy editor of ES magazine. So first of all, Liz, America Decides, episode eight. Just give us a brief summary of what happened exactly. Um, So it is the day of the presidential election. And it basically, the whole episode's focused on ATN and its coverage of all of the unfolding drama. So Tom is kind of steering the ship the Sibs are kept upstairs. That was Logan's golden rule is that they wouldn't get involved, but that doesn't last very long. And then it's just a back and forth really between the Dems and the Republicans. Everyone is on the phone <laughs> <Yes>. with everybody, <laughs> um, trying to influence everybody and um, get the best possible coverage for their team. So obviously a lot of moving parts in ATN's newsroom. Can you just explain why is ATN's call so important? <laughs> or oh, can anyone do that? Well, I, I have to say watching this, it did It did make me realize that I have been trying to understand the U.S. electoral system for most of my adult yeah. life. <laughs> From what I understand, the, because you would think, right, that if a big network like a Fox or an ATN calls the election, it's kind of like, so what? Like the, all that matters is the actual counting of the votes. But from what I understand, those, those calls are hugely influential for the states that are yet to vote or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems very, very good. Cool. Yeah, and it's the idea that you'd have a candidate who will grab any kind of leverage that they possibly can, declare themselves president, as happens in, in the episode with Mencken, the kind of right-wing nutbag. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and he'll hold on to that in that very Trumpian way. And it will all go to litigation and all this kind of stuff. But they've completely kind of got a foothold in yeah, that way. Yeah, it's a populist tactic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. It's, I would say this is the most kind of blatant the writers have been in reflecting the Murdochs and Fox News and Trump. I mean, this was a pretty, pretty patently Mencken versus Jimenez was Trump versus Clinton. And I don't know if you've been following the, the Fox News stuff, there's a brilliant, I shouldn't recommend another publication, but there's a brilliant piece in Vanity Fair about the uh, inside, insides of it. And it's exactly what's happening here. It's like Murdoch thought Trump was a complete buffoon, hated him, despised him. And yet once he got a sniff that Trump was good for the ratings and if he was nice to Trump, Trump would back his interests, he backed Trump. And that's precisely Roman's line of thinking here. He's just, I don't, I really, really don't care who wins you know, we just want the best person for us. And if he's going to skewer the Gojo deal, then he's the best person for us. And that's as that's where it ends. Yeah, and he says at the end, doesn't he? Oh, he's just great TV. Yeah. Like nothing yeah. happens. And Shiv was like, no, something happens. Oh we yeah. just made some great TV. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Which is, um, and I suppose this is, I was wondering where the series was heading, to be honest with you. Because I was kind of like, Logan died where are we? Like, who, yeah. who, who's going to actually win out of these three idiotic kids? And I was getting a little bit of a, a feeling of not really that bothered, to be honest. You know, mm. where is, where's this show going? Where's the drama? Where's the intrigue? Is that why you left us All these. Weeks? This is why I left. Yeah. I kind of just zoned out, anyway. basically, but now I'm back because my interest has peaked again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but actually, it's kind of looking at the way that power works in America, of course, and and the idea that even when it comes down to the most important person in the country, the president, and how that system works, well, it can just be at the whims of the idiots who run the networks, who are compromised by self-interest, you know, sibling rivalry, the fact they've had a bit of coke that night, you know, all, <laughs> this, all these kind of little trivialities or personal Ill issues can really allow sort of 
neo-fascists yeah. into the most important job in the country. Well, what, and it's it's yeah, really I mean, fascinating. It's, it's a little bit heavy-handed, I must say, yeah. but it was it was still a pretty gripping dramatisation of that. What did you think of the episode as a whole? Because I think there were some really good standout moments in this. One of my particular favourites was the moment that Kendall realises that Shiv has betrayed him and it's that walk around with that screen where she's con- she's just looking at Kendall go walk, walk to, over to Greg to confirm and everything and the look on Shiv's face. There was a lot of those like sort of big moments. So any of that stand out for you guys? Uh, for me, it was great to see Greg and Tom back together. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fantastic to see Greg have such a kind of... He was really a central character this week. Um, and I think we've all spoken about the fact that we were sad yeah. that he had been kind of relegated to having these kind of really silly lines. And then his character seemed to kind of become very 2D. And it was nice to see him back having this much more complexity. Um, and he was just so funny. Yeah, That's a very good way of putting it. It felt like Greg went from 2D to 3D in this episode and you saw his lesser scene for the, this season, his Machiavellian side. And, you know, I, I loved the conversation in the broom cupboard with Schiff. And, you know, no matter how threatening she got, he just kind of held his poker face and was like, mm. I've got you here. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear our predictions of what might happen in the last few episodes. Welcome back. Still with me are the Evening Standards, Elizabeth Gregory, Hamish McBain and Martin Robinson. The thing that Tom and Greg have in common is that they are, they're both snakes but they're both snakes. If you throw them in the snake pit, there's going to be a lot of dead snakes and it's not going to be them. I mean, they will literally do anything. <laughs> yeah. And I love the fact that he's – I love the fact that we see that Greg's befriended Matson and he's been on this awful night out. But he's stuck it out because he knows he yeah. has to. And he goes, uh, yeah. I drank things that weren't meant to be drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They made an old man dance and he didn't want to <laughs> dance. Yeah. What do you think of that team up? Because Hamish, you did call that that might happen, a Greg and Matson team up. Yeah. So well done. And um, <laughs> <I> celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But what, what does that look like? What, you know, why, why is Matson taking Greg seriously now? I, I, I mean, I, my thing, I don't want to get onto predictions, but I think <laughs> Matson is going to go to prison. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think Matson is going to. I think it's going to end very, very badly for Matson. I mean, they're they're making there's so many little references to what a lunatic he is. You know, there's the talk of the night out, and also when they cut to him in that hotel room, he's stirring a gin and tonic with his finger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't trust that's, anyone that's, that does that's that. not something that a sober, <laughs> well-adjusted billionaire would do. Yeah, I thought um, Tom was just absolutely unreal. In- in this episode. Yeah, I just thought, so I just thought he was just so good. Like, he really feels like the proper standout performer for me at the moment. And, but it was just so nicely put together because it was so, it was a combination of like really intense sort of one liners and deeply political things and then just like farcical sort of like, yeah. you know, comedy of manners kind of thing. It's just the way Tom was 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 the useless, absolutely useless in that job. He just couldn't cope with it. But also, yeah, he's just nastiness as well. It's just such a brilliant character, I think. And uh, the pregnancy reveal, obviously. Yeah. Oh, that kind was of, sad. Yeah. I mean, what do you think of the reaction to it? Like, I think there's no better line that sums up succession better than... Tom finding out that finally Shiv's pregnant, which is what he's wanted for, you know, basically the entire season. And his response is, is that a tactic? Yeah. It's just so sad. What do you think? um, Because obviously one of the final scenes is Shiv sort of storming out the office, calling Matson and trying to come up with their plan. What do you think their next move is? Yeah, she was sort of saying to him um, that they needed to release all the, that bad news and that scandal around the subscribers in India, like then, so it gets yeah. buried in the middle of all the election stuff. I mean, that's she's very isolated now, isn't she? I mean, that is, that's it as far as her and the alliance with the brothers are concerned. I mean, there's no yeah. way back there. And that, that's her re- remaining sort of tactic because she hasn't got Tom. She's kind of like only got this guy and this relationship going. I don't know how she's going to turn it around and I don't know how it's going to play into the final sort of two episodes. And I suppose that brings 
to the idea of who's going to win. It kind of brings us mm. back to that. Who is that eventually going to, if we are seeing it as who's going to be the successor, who is going to be there? Uh, I don't think it's going to be Shiv, you know, yeah. given the way things are at the moment. Um, I've always said Kendall is going to sort of be the one but be devastated. But I don't know now, actually. I'm second-guessing myself. Uh, I oh, think, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because I think... Uh, it's Roman. <laughs> I mean, he, he was right in saying, what would dad do? And you would mm. imagine that he would have gone straight for that other candidate. And uh, yeah. Would, yeah, and Kendall like zoned out for about half the episode as well. Yeah. And all this was going on and Roman yeah. was going one way and Shiv was going the other. He was kind of like just shut down mm. and was just kind of bewildered about the whole thing. He didn't know whether it was kind of his conscience over this sort of, you know, support for... Uh, the extreme right or whether it was just he couldn't handle the power and responsibility the specifics of the job or whether it was his daughter but probably like a combination of all that stuff yeah but he's just not suited to it he just can't do it you know it, it doesn't just... the fact that he in the end chooses power show that he is suited for it Liz is always Team Kendall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Liz is so Team Kendall. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. What do you mean the fact that he he declared it? Yeah, so. You're saying that he kind of doesn't have it in him to take over because he hasn't, maybe he's not got the kind of, that killer instinct. But in the end, he kind of does have the killer instinct because he does go with um, his future at Waystar Roko rather than choosing the right thing to do. True, but the only reason why he does it is because he's betrayed by Shiv, right? Yeah, it's that's, his, that's, his, that's his way into that. Even though, yeah, absolutely, that's from his position... Uh, which is quite closely around, aligned with Romans, there is that move to for the best thing for themselves and the business. Mm. But what nudges him there is that the fact that Shiv is suddenly like personal, which is it shouldn't be the way that these things work. Do you know what I mean? I think that what's going to happen is, because I just feel like he's really starting to get spooked by the level of power mm. that they that they have over democracy and America and blah, blah, blah. I really think that the whole thing is going to implode. There's going to be some really, really, really nasty capital storming style event. And Kendall is going to take his money and run for the hills and be a very happy, contented father. Oh. Wow, that is... That is cool. Do you know what? I've, I've been sort of thinking along the same lines as in who's going to be the one who's going to walk away? Who's going to like be done with this world and see it for what it is and actually just go, do you know what? I'm going to take my money and run. I'm not having anything to do with anyone. I thought that would be like a, a redeeming kind of ending that wouldn't be like a happy ending as such. But you would, for instance, yeah, you'd have Kendall just walking away and leaving Roman to his, you know, kingdom and Shiv to, I don't know, whatever she wants to do with Matson. Mm. Thought that might be a good option, but I don't know. Well, now that you've actually said it out loud, maybe it's just someone else saying it um, <laughs> in a Roman kind no, of way. Sounds, I'm just like, right. actually, no, he can't. He can't be. He won't be a happy father. That's not his destiny. He can't that will not work? Yeah, for me, for, for me, that's going. an insane prediction. But <laughs> but can it's I just say? Can I just say that Hamish? Every insane prediction he makes does usually come true, such as yeah. Greg and Matson joining forces, which looked impossible at the beginning of the series. Okay. So mm. I will. I'll. Here's a link. You know. Here's a list of insane predictions. Just so we got it on. The okay. <laughs> but first of all, <laughs> as, as discussed. The, the election will ultimately be called for Jimenez and Mencken will command his followers to do some kind of uprising. Uh, Connor will somehow do a deal with Jimenez and end up as vice president. Shiv very, very reluctantly will become Connor's chief of staff. Ro uh, Roman, Roman will... This is already getting a big no from me, by the way. <laughs> okay. Go on. Well, no, just uh, this is my crazy thinking. One of these things will be right. Matson will do the deal, but will be done for fraud and will go to jail. They'll lose all the so they'll lose all the money. Roman will start a kind of Infowars style network with Mencken as his key person. Kendall will run away and be happy and contented and a good father. And Tom and Greg will start some sort of awful lobbying consultancy agency type potential deal. spin off show if that happens as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't agree with any of that. I, I, what, I, what I say is okay. I'm gonna. That's actually made me go back to my original position, okay. which is uh, Kendall will win. He will. <laughs> he will get. The, he will get. He will get the big job. He will have lost everything. He will be deeply, deeply un unhappy and broken as a person. But he will have got the job. I think Roman will still be there. 
with him in some way. I think Shiv will be the one, okay, who will go off because she's having a kid. I, I think the big question is whether Tom will go with her or mm. not. Um, maybe not. Maybe but she will escape. Maybe she'll go live happily somewhere with Matson. Yeah. But, <laughs> Liz, yeah. who's going to end up where? Yeah. Um, Kendall at the top, obviously. <laughs> and? Matson, I don't think he's going to jail. I think he'll just return to Sweden and like be rich. Roman, I don't think he cares enough to set up like a co-channel, you know, like an info was. He just kind of like goes along with everything that's happening. So if Kendall takes over, I think he'll be like, okay, cool, I'll be number two. Also, I will say I am so excited and I, this is not a sentence I've said in, in my life. <laughs> I know I'm say. so excited about the funeral yeah. next week. <laughs> but I read an interview in the Sunday Times with the actress who plays the mother. Oh, yeah. And she confirmed that she's Harriet back. Walker. Harriet yeah. Walker, yes. Harriet Walker, she confirmed that she's back for the last two episodes. Kerry will be That's back good. as well. Kerry, Kerry will be back. <laughs> Marsha will be back. Yeah. yeah. Stewie. Yeah. yeah all oh, of them. And everyone's going to look so chic. You just know that they're all going to be crowded round in the middle of the service and someone's phone's going to go off and something horrendous is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, there'll be deals going yeah. on as it's being lowered in. There'll be bitchy <laughs> comments from the back. It's <laughs> all going to go off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Succession is available to watch in the UK on Sky Atlantic and now. And that's it from this episode. We'll be back next Tuesday with more Succession Insight. The Leader Podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm.